Well, finding alternative sources of energy that reduce greenhouse gas emissions is, of course, an ongoing struggle. Dozens of solutions have been proposed over the years, some more viable than others. Since the 70s, nuclear power has prevented the emission of over 64 gigatons of greenhouse gases. In the past two years, despite the nuclear scares and safety issues, it has provided over 10% of the world's electricity. Commercial concentrated solar power plants are now big business. More are under construction, but solar provides less than half a percent of global electricity. Wind power has been a very visible example of alternative technologies being developed. It's growing rapidly. Some estimates say wind energy now produces up to 2% of total worldwide electricity. Recent technological developments are now boosting the potential of tidal energy, but capital investment costs are huge, and to date, its impact on the electricity market is negligible. And some of the potential solutions are just, well, a bit out there. One plan is to spray billions of tonnes of sulphur gases into the atmosphere to block the sun's rays or put those gases into plane fuel and let airlines spread the blocking gases around the Earth. Another, with a planet-sized budget, is to arrange a ring of mirrors around the Earth. They'll reflect some of the sun's rays back into space, sparing the Earth additional warming. And there's a rather far-fetched plan to put a ring of satellites into orbit, which instead of reflecting the sun's heat and energy, would harness it and beam it back to the planet via microwaves to receivers on the surface, negating the need for earthly power stations. So should we be considering those sorts of really radical options? I'm joined now by Baroness Worthington, the shadow spokesperson on energy and climate change in the House of Lords, who was one of the architects of the climate change bill, and from New York by Professor Bjorn Lomborg, who's the director of the think tank, the Copenhagen Consensus Centre. Uh, Bjorn Lomborg, do we need to think more radically than we have to date? Well, I think some of the solutions that you proposed are very, very expensive, like, for instance, putting mirrors in space. But very clearly, what we need to do is to realize we are not going to solve this problem just continuing business as usual. We have been trying to get green energy going for about two decades, and as long as it's more expensive than fossil fuels, we're never really going to succeed. We need to get the price of green energy down, and that's going to happen through innovation. That is about getting much more green energy R&D. Well, isn't that what they're doing? Well, unfortunately, what we've spent most of our money on is putting up existing inefficient technology. If you look, for instance, at Germany, Germany has spent the equivalent of about $130 billion on subsidizing existing inefficient solar panels. The net effect is to postpone global warming by the end of the century by 37 hours. That's just simply a ridiculously large amount of money to get very, very little benefit. What they should have done is to spend that $130 billion in getting much, much better future green technology so that the Chinese and the Indians would buy them as well. OK, uh, well, Brian Worthington, I mean, you, you were partly responsible for what Britain is doing now mm -hmm. um, with the Climate Change yeah. Act. I mean, have you been tinkering around the edges, achieving virtually nothing? No, I, the, the Climate Change Act is actually a very um, sensible response to climate change because it's technologically neutral. It just says by a certain date we've got to get emissions down, and we've got carbon budgets that need to take us there, and it then leaves uh, the, the which technologies really is open. But so do you accept Bjorn Lomborg's analysis that actually what we're doing so far is... I mean, it's not even a drop well, of it's. I mean, the reason it's not doing enough is because we're not do, we're not, we don't have the political will to really do it properly. I mean, one of the things you should start with doing is stopping foss, fossil fuel subsidies. And that's one of the most cost-efficient ways of solving this problem. But it's very difficult to do that. This is a very powerful industry with a very powerful lobby that prevents those kind of measures from being taken. I mean, I listed some of those wacky ideas, mirrors in space, gas, gas pumped out from aeroplanes. I mean, and we laugh when we read those things. But, I mean, don't we actually have to... I mean, you know, do, do any of them... Are any of them worth thinking about? Um, I think we do think we, need, we do need to think quite radically because there is going to come a time when I think we're going to have too much CO2 in the atmosphere and we might have to look at ways of mitigating that. But we can start with looking at how we can do sequestration in soils, for example, how we can maybe get the oceans to store more carbon. Those are the sorts of more moderate ways of doing it. I think mirrors in space is a long way off. Bjorn Lomberg, the problem is that huge numbers of people out there just still aren't convinced. So whether you're saying we need to think more radically, we need to stop wasting money, or whether... Uh, Baroness Worthington here is saying, well, we're, all, we're sort of on the right track. Um, there's huge numbers of ordinary people out there who don't buy into either of you. 
Can, can I say something? Yeah. I, I think fundamentally what we need to get is cheaper green energy. If you look at the, U, the U.S., the U.S. has actually cut about twice as much carbon emissions over the past five years as Europe and the rest of the Kyoto Protocol has managed for the last 20. And that's because they discovered fracking. They've essentially shifted from coal to gas, which emits half the amount of CO2 per energy unit produced. So that shows if you get cheap green energy, People will switch, and that's what we need. We need to get green energy to become so cheap that Indians, Chinese, everyone else will want to buy these technologies. And quite frankly, I, I don't share the Baroness' uh, b belief that we in Europe and other well-meaning countries will cut very much. I, she also alluded to it in saying, you know, there's just not enough political will can, to actually yeah, pay can, up. can I just say, I mean, how do you get to better technologies? You do it through deploying existing technologies and then improving them. You create a market for them. You create an incentive, and people go and innovate and, it, and it's kind of patronizing to say we've got to we've got to do all the development and wait for China to come along and then buy it from us they're doing huge amounts investing in all sorts of things electric vehicles concentrated solar power novel forms of nuclear I mean it really is quite a, a very European centric view to think we've got to do all of that and do all the R&D they're doing it for us as well but isn't, isn't the trouble that actually the last week in Britain in British politics has shown that the most important thing for a lot of people is, is just the cost of their energy bills Absolutely. and th they're much more concerned with that than they are with the future of a planet when they're all dead. Well, I think people can care about two things at once. They can hope that they're being charged a fair amount of money for their bills, and that's what last week's discussion was all about. Nobody wants to be ripped off. We want to be paying what we need to pay, but we don't want to be taken for a ride. Um, you can still care about the future of the planet, the, how, what kind of planet we're giving to our children, our grandchildren, and still care about having a fair price. I think that's perfectly possible. Bjorn Lomberg, I'm slightly confused by your position, because on the one hand you're saying, you know, we, we need cheap green energy. On the other hand, you're saying, well, everything we've sort of tried so far with the market isn't working, we need to sort of think bigger and more, 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 more creatively. How do you do that and invest in this new technology, as you say, without spending a lot of money? Good point. Well, we are going to have to spend money, but not nearly as much if we focus on deploying new technology, essentially innovation. What we've been doing right now is, as the Baroness pointed out, we've been just putting up lots of inefficient solar panels and wind turbines right now. That may, may make us feel good, but look, just the, Euro, uh, just the UK cost of living up to the EU climate policy is going to be about... Uh, 16 billion pounds a year for the rest of the century. And if everyone in Europe does this, the net effect by the end of the century will be to lower temperatures by 0.05 degrees, 1 20th of 1 degree centigrade. We won't be able to measure that impact. That's why we need a totally different level of this. This is not about putting up a few wind turbines and feeling good. It's about making them so cheap that everyone wants them. I don't, I don't follow. I also don't understand where those numbers come from. I mean, really, I work on European policy and on climate policy. We're not spending anything like as much as that. So I'm sorry, Bjorn, I don't know where you got those numbers from, but they don't ring true to me. We're doing very little, actually. There's more we can do. Baroness, and we can I, I also stop fossil fuels. I, I would be happy to share, fuel I, I would be happy be share those numbers with you. Okay, well, and they're from... We, you, I'm afraid Thank you have to share them, share them offline. Baroness, or, or, or they're, or they're from peer-reviewed research. Okay. But thank you both very much indeed for joining thank us. You. Yes.